Coming up on today's episode of Airborne, the FAA publishes repair station final rule. Sport aviation legend Wayne Ison has gone west. Prince William is to become a part-time EMS pilot, and a New Jersey senator would like to ban all tourist helicopter flights over the Hudson River. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. According to the Aircraft Electronics Association, we have some good news. The FAA has published its final rule regulating repair stations that drops the changes to the repair station rating system. It only retained the authority to deny an application for a new repair station certificate if the applicant or certain associated key individuals had materially contributed to the circumstances that caused a previous repair station certificate revocation action. The FAA received more than 230 public comments to the NPRM, which was published in May of 2012. The majority of the comments, including those from the AEA, had serious concerns with the proposed changes, and many suggested withdrawing the entire proposal. As a result of the substantive comments received by the FAA, it has withdrawn most of the changes proposed to the NPRM. The new rule does have changes and fine-tunes many sections. These need to be reviewed carefully, but overall, the AEA says this is a win for the public. One of the sport aviation world's most respected sport plane designers has gone west. Known primarily for the Mini Max and related series of aircraft, Wayne Eisen passed away last Saturday. Wayne was one of the good guys who knew what a good basic aircraft could do for the sport plane industry. With a team of local supporters, Wayne designed, built, tested, and produced the Mini Max family of ultralights and later certified airplanes. He produced kits, plans, and partial kits with over a dozen staff members. His aircraft had such a broad acceptance that Wayne was inducted into the EAA Hall of Fame. But the very best accolade of all was the great number of team aircraft builders and flyers for whom Wayne brought such continuing joy. His designs of the Minimax, Max, and Airbike have been built and flown by pilots in 33 countries. Recreational and sport aviation owes a lot to Wayne, and he will be missed. You're watching Airborne. We'll be right back after these messages. ADS-V will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-V today with the Ben King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to support Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, you can send an email to jim at aero-news.net. His Royal Highness, the Duke of Cambridge, a.k.a. Prince William, is to become a helicopter pilot with the East Anglian Air Ambulance. According to reports, after completing a mandatory period of training this autumn and winter and receiving his helicopter ATP certificate, the Duke will start work with the Air Ambulance Service based at Cambridge and Norwich airports in the spring of 2015. Prince William will start as a co-pilot, but after a period of training, will be qualified to fly as a helicopter commander. The Prince will draw a salary but he will donate his wages in full to charity. He will continue to undertake engagements on behalf of the Queen and his charitable affiliations during this time. During his operation experience in the Royal Air Force Search and Rescue Force, he undertook more than 150 search and rescue operations. With some 2,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, it's fun to look back and enjoy the places we've seen, the pilots we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes.
We saw a lot of interesting planes at the U.S. Sport Aviation Expo in Sebring earlier this year. But this video features a plane that doesn't exactly fit the description of light sport. Here's some beautiful video of a visiting Boeing B-17. Search B-17 at the U.S. Sport Aviation Expo on Aero TV's news channel. A New Jersey senator would like to ban all tourist helicopter flights over the Hudson River. Tom Patton reports. Ashley, this latest threat to legitimate aviation businesses looks like another example of nimbyism as New Jersey Democratic Senator Robert Menendez has joined a group of residents and local officials calling for an outright ban on tourist helicopters flying over the river in the New York metropolitan area. Menendez and others say that the flights represent a threat both to safety and quality of life along the river. The coalition includes the mayors of several of the towns along the river, as well as members of Congress and at least one anti-helicopter advocacy group. Late last week, Menendez and two New Jersey Democratic congressmen sent a letter both to the New Jersey Department of Transportation and the FAA asking them to, quote, provide guidance on additional authority needed to implement and enforce a ban on tour helicopters that present public nuisance and safety concerns. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. Airborne will be right back after these messages from some of the best sponsors in the aviation business. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. A group of former SpaceX employees have filed a class action lawsuit against SpaceX, claiming they were not given proper notice before being laid off last month. According to reports, terminated employees in California must be provided with 60 days advanced written notice for the termination to comply with the California Work Adjustment and Restraining Notification Act. The workers in this case claim they were abruptly terminated as part of layoffs ordered by SpaceX on July 21st and were not provided with the required notice. The plaintiffs say that the proposed class is made up of all non-exempt employees who had worked at the company's California facilities within the previous four years. They're seeking unspecified back pay and compensatory damages. The FAA has issued a special airworthiness information bulletin for Piper aircraft, models PA-28, PA-32, PA-34, PA-44, and PA-46 series airplanes of an airworthiness concern. The SAIB relates to the air inlet hose that may be between the air filter and the fuel injector, carburetor, or carburetor heat box depending on the airplane model. If this air inlet hose collapses, it may reduce airflow to the engine and could result in a rough running engine or a loss of power. An accident of a Piper PA-28-140 airplane has been found to have been caused by a failure of this hose. It's suspected this same problem may have led to other accidents or loss of power in the listed models of Piper airplanes. Owners should check the hose for broken or loose cords on external surface, loose or displaced supporting wire, or signs of wear, perforation, or deterioration, or collapse. It's also critically important that the hose part number, as listed in the Piper Parts catalog, is appropriate for the model of aircraft. Hard Cell Engine Technologies continues to expand the company's new line of engine accessories by acquiring Plain Power Limited of Granbury, Texas. However, the acquisition did not include the SkyTech line of starters. Hartzell President Mike Dispro stated in a press release that, quote, The purchase of Plain Power is consistent with our strategy of growing our core product lines organically and through acquisition, end quote. Dispro said that the product line would eventually be relocated to the Montgomery, Alabama facility. Rich Chiape of Plain Power Partners Limited said, quote, 
This agreement will enable my partners and me to continue to not only focus on Skytech's continuing success, but to pursue new innovations for our customers and additional growth opportunities, end quote. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.